Good morning and welcome to this week's Pet Pairing 2. A very, very exciting things are happening today. Uh, the Barbie movie is releasing and I love you, Greta Gerwig, Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. But the second thing that's happening today is far more exciting to me and that is the official announcement of what's inside the Mothership 11 palette from Pat McGrath Labs taking my Inglot eyeshadow primer. So I'm not really going to talk much about the release of the new palette because there's really not much to say. We've only seen the outside packaging and I know a lot of you are very concerned that we're again getting a pink gold palette based on the inspo and the outside of the like the outside box of the packaging. Honestly, I can't guarantee that we are not. So I'm not really going to make any promises, but if there's something to be said about outer packaging is that in the past like ever since Divine Rose 1 basically her outer packaging has always been some sort of elements of like pink and purple and gold and yet the palettes that we have gotten since then to me personally are still quite different from each other so we will just wait and see also there's been some rumors um, going around that this will be a Barbie collab. I don't know who started these uh, rumors. I don't know why these rumors have been started. Frankly, I see no connection between Pat McGrath Labs and Barbie because for one, none of her inspo images have had anything to do with Barbie. Uh, but if you do go back and look at all of these images, you will find one consistent, you know, word being used everywhere and that's the word sun. So I'm betting on something sun or sun something. Uh, but we shall see. I'm going to take now a little bit of my Glow Lust by Auric in the shade Selenite to slightly brighten up the situation underneath my eyes. So yes, outer packaging doesn't say much. I don't really care too much what's inside because I always end up enjoying it, even if it is, you know, repetitive color stories. Um, I've said it before, I will say it again. Mother is a smart businesswoman. She makes what sells, or at least probably that's also what her investors want her to do, uh, make money. So she's not in the business of making palette for palettes for like niche consumers like you and I, people who collect her palettes, people who have deep knowledge of all of her palettes and eyeshadows and all of that stuff. So frankly, I don't really care what the color story of the palette is going to be because I know I'm going to enjoy it. My main concern is the presence of baked shades, okay? That is my main concern. I'm going to take this little Becca um, Evermatte Poreless Priming Perfector an older product from Becca, a brand that doesn't really exist anymore. And I'm just going to do a little bit of pore filling here because the uh, powders that I use, the Dior Backstage, because I'm going to use the Dior Backstage foundation again, that one doesn't really do much pore blurring. So let's help a bit the situation by just using this primer. So you can feel about it any way you want to feel about it. Honestly, I'm taking the Dior Backstage foundation. Uh, when it comes to the pinks and the golds and the repetitiveness of her palettes, I don't care. You do you, I do me. I love Pat's Mothership palettes. I always get a lot of joy out of them. They're, you know, almost exclusively the makeup that I use on the daily. So like I said, don't care. But give me my baked shades back. I am just, my main concern is are there going to be any baked shades in there? There are only a few hours left till the announcement because it's going to be um, sometime this afternoon that we're going to see the insides of the palette. And obviously once that happens we're going to have to have an emergency meeting to discuss the contents a little bit more in detail. What does mother have in stock for us this year? I'm just really really excited that we are getting a mothership. That's pretty much all I can say about it taking the Dior Skin Correct Concealer. Now, I don't know if Mother is going to be doing anything inspired by Barbie, but because the Barbie movie is being released today, I am going to do a Barbie-inspired pet pairing. And dare I say so myself, it will be obnoxiously pink. So, let's see how far I can take the theme pink. Now, I am going to watch the movie, unfortunately not today, because Mm, right now, the city where I live is hosting an event called the Four Day Marches, which is an event that started, I want to say, almost 100 years ago at this point. Maybe even we celebrated already the 100 years ago, like last year or two years ago. Um, and originally, it only like military, military troops from the whole world participated. But now it's become so big that people from all over the world come to uh, walk 
because the four-day march is basically is uh, for four consecutive days people walk a mini uh, not a minimum but like depending on your age anywhere between 30 to 50 kilometers so a total of about 200 kilometers in four days and then they just take like different routes around the city where I live going to take the Dior backstage powder so the uh, walking itself is pretty hardcore and only lasts for four days but you can uh, imagine that now aside from the walking there is a significant amount of partying being done so the city center is basically swamped with people already since last weekend so the walking only started yesterday on Tuesday uh, however the parties have already started since last weekend and they're going to last all the way up until the last day that the people walk which is Friday Friday I'm going to take off um, well we are given like half a day off anyway because the hospital where I work is basically situated right next to the road where the walkers come back and it's like a big celebratory you know walking back into the city they get um, flowers like a specific type of flowers gladiola I'll put up a picture because I don't really know how they're called in English um, and like the the they call the 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 road via gladiola because you know they come back they get the flowers and then um, yeah my boss is walking already for 11th year in a row so we're going to greet him and have a little party because one of my friends live lives on the street where um, the walkers will come back so but because of that the city center is swamped with people and it's really not the best time to be going to the movies right now so we are going to see the movie a week from now about a week from now and I'm basically going to do a little practice uh, look right now because obviously I am going to wear an obnoxious amount of pink to the actual movie now let me take a bronzer I think I'm going to just do a nude honey today mm, I actually grabbed bronze mahogany can I do bronze mahogany? yeah I can do bronze mahogany I'm going to take a little bit of bronze mahogany go in with a very light hand and start to build that up here on my cheeks a little bit as a bronze or shade so the Barbie movie, have you guys already, well probably you haven't seen it because it releases today, but are you planning on watching it? I am so excited for it. The trailers that I have seen were absolutely hilarious. Margot Robbie is gorgeous and I'm sure she will be the absolute sparkling star of this movie, but may I say Ryan Gosling has been stealing the show in the trailers. He's absolutely hilarious. I think ever since I watched him in a couple of SNL skits, I've been like, <laughs> Ryan Gosling's comedic talents have been un underutilized in uh, Hollywood. So I am really, really excited to watch the movie. I really like him. Um, I've, I think he has a really good taste in choosing movies. I don't know that he's ever really made a really bad movie. I know that he directed a movie and I haven't actually seen that one. And my brother said that one was pretty bad. But the movies that he has starred in have all been really, really good. Keeping in with the pink theme, I'm going to take a little bit of this blush from Pat, Nude Venus 2, which was part of her holiday um, collection for 2022. And I am going to use my Sonia G Hinoki set brush, which I don't really use as much as the bronzer one. I use the one, the uh, fluffy... This brush I use a lot for my bronzer, but this one I kind of always forget to use. She, Sonia G, by the way, is releasing or like re-releasing her fundament, fundamental set with like a um, new type of handles like walnut if I'm not mistaken. And I think the original fundamentals came with this like um, handle, like the red to black ombre lacquered kind of a handle which is really really beautiful I haven't I will be honest I haven't really looked in detail exactly what brushes are in that set if some of them are duplicates of brush brushes that I already have because I feel like at this point I'm pretty set with my Sonia G collection of brushes I don't really feel like I have any gaps or anything is missing and I'm really interested in a specific uh, shape of brush if anything it would be just for like aesthetic pleasure for myself because I really like the uh, look of that walnut handle but for now I don't think I'm going to be picking up any of those brushes but they're probably fabulous brushes because Sonia G makes amazing brushes 
This blush has a little bit of like a peachy pink shift to it, which is why it allows interpretation as both a cool toned and a warm toned blush. And today I'm going to like interpret it like more warm toned. So I'm going to also take the Divine Rose highlighter because that one also you can see flashes are quite pink. Like I said, we're going for an obnoxiously pink theme today. And I'm basically going to use the same brush also for highlighting. So I'm also going to slightly apply it over the blush itself um, for like a little glowy effect. I'm going to spritz a little bit of Fix Plus on my sponge just to melt all the powders together, especially the blush bronzer highlighter. And now let's talk a little bit about the look. Obviously we need to do something with a pink eyeshadow and of all the pinks that Pat has released, at least like the more like obnoxious Barbie type pinks, I think this one from the Divine Rose 2 palette is my favorite. I adore my Divine Rose 2 palette. I think you can tell by how beat up my palette is, how much I enjoy wearing it, especially in the summer. And I'll be honest, on an occasion, I actually really like wearing this uh, pink shade. It's a beautiful shade that you can really, really like uh, work to be like a sort of like a duochrome pinky gold shift shade. And you can really like blend it out to the point where it's not like super obnoxiously pink. I mean, obviously it's still like a hot Barbie pink, but I feel like of all of her obnoxiously hot Barbie pinks, this one has my preference. So I'm going to use this shade sort of like on the outer portion of my lid and I'm going to apply a little bit and just do a lot of blending because I don't want it to be like overly pink because I still don't think these kind of like pinks really suit me. Uh, and then on the inner portion of the lid actually I'm going to apply a little bit of this shade, the Skin Show whatever it's called from uh, the Divine Rose 2 palette, sort of like on the inner portion of my lids. And then we're going to hop into the Utopian Dream palette. And I am going to apply this shade in my inner corners and I'm going to apply the beautiful Venusian, what is it called now? Astral Venusian Orchid. So this gorgeous shade here over top of the um, skin show as well as the pink shade for like some extra sparkle and an extra interesting element to the look. So that is the look that we're going for today more or less. I'm going to take this uh, fluffy brush and like I said I'm going to go into the pink shade and I will try to use small amounts and just work with increments so that I can achieve the like sort of like feathered pink effect that I was talking about because I don't want, like I said, this to be like way too pink. I mean, it is like really pink, but I'm hoping to be able to blend it out to a state which doesn't look too offensive, or at least not to me. Oh, you know what? Again, I forgot to do my brows. Give me one second, I'll do my brows and then I'll be back. And like I said, I am sort of like feathering it out upwards towards the brow bone. Going to try to repeat the same on my other lid. I'm like pretty happy with uh, the state of this side of my lids here because I think it's really a very soft pink. Last week uh, when we last saw each other, I talked a bit about what kind of new releases Lisa Eldridge was planning. And indeed, it turned out that the rumors about her releasing liquid lipsticks were true. She did release the Velveteens. I'll be honest with you, I absolutely love the name of them. Velveteens sounds so nice. And I know it's a maybe a bit of a reference to the Velveteen Rabbit, I'm not sure, but I'm guessing that that's a play on uh, words for that. And Lisa Eldridge is such a good saleswoman that I always click away from her videos being like fully prepared to empty my bank account. So I watched the release video for the Velveteens and then I thought, hmm, maybe I would like to have ribbon in this formula as well. Because one, I was not planning on picking up anything because I still vividly remember hating liquid lipsticks with an absolute passion. But then I watched her video and I was like, hmm, it seems like it took a lot of convincing to make her uh, create a liquid lipstick formula for the precise reasons that I hated liquid lipsticks always. So I trust that if anyone's made a really good liquid lipstick formula, it would be Lisa Eldridge. And I was fully prepared to put 
um, ribbon in my basket the day that the release dropped. Oh, by the way, I'm now going to just take this shade, as I mentioned, in the inner portion of my lids. But then I also thought about this and I was like, listen, you like the velvets, like the uh, true velvet formula, also because it is just beautiful and stunning in terms of packaging. Like, I far prefer the packaging and the like full-on aesthetic of the velvets compared to the liquid lipsticks. Like the velveteens, I'm sure they're also like a beautiful component because Lisa is a very classy woman of very good taste. But if you put a velveteen next to the velvet in terms of packaging, the velvet wins for me all day, every day. And even if it's the best liquid lipstick in the world, liquids are just messier. And I know that in the end of the day, I will just far prefer to use my bullets and I will not fuck around with a liquid formula. So for now I decided to skip because I thought, you know, if you have the velvet ribbon and the velveteen ribbon, nine and a half times out of ten, you're going to wear your velvet and you're not going to pull out for that velveteen. So why are you spending your money, first of all, on a color that you already have? Because that's the other thing. Most of the colors, no, no, not most of the colors, all of the colors are basically corresponding colors in her velvet formula. And I understand that for people who have, you know, gripe with her um, true velvet formula that it doesn't last very well. I know people in more humid climates uh, have issues with breakage of her true velvet bullets. N not one of my velvets has broken ever. And I don't know whether that's because I live in a more moderate climate, so there's less prone to breakage, but I've also traveled with these lipsticks to like hotter climate to go to the beach for example last year and I just pack them really tightly so that they don't move around too much um, so I've even taken these lipsticks traveling and they're still intact for me so I don't really know what's going on I know they're a bit more fragile because they're so high in their pigment obviously when you have uh, a higher amount of powder in there because the pigment is powder compared to the, like the creamier components of the formula it's going to be prone to breakage so we have to baby a formula like this a little bit you can't just like go and like apply a lot of pressure but I know that for a lot of people they are probably doing their best and still these lipsticks break a lot on them so um, I don't know what the problem is I'm going to by the way take the um, intensifies now and apply that in my inner corner and like just like the tiniest bit over top of these uh, pinkier eyeshadows here but I'm just going to use my finger for that so I'm just going to take a bit like this and gently dab that over top of these shades because I don't want to disturb them and lift them. Um, so I can imagine that for these people, taking now Astral Venusian Orchid, this new velveteen formula is perfect because they can finally own the colors in a formula that will not break or will last better on them or you know all of the above. So I'm very happy for everyone who finally will get the chance to try these colors because Ribbon in particular I think is a red that everyone needs to have in their collection. I adore Ribbon. So I'm very happy for everyone who will get these and enjoy them but I will not be joining the party because for one I have a lot of these lipsticks in her velvets. Why do I need them in a different formula that I don't really enjoy that much? I'm going to go into Hitopia now and take this Skin Show shade in my inner corners because it is a bit more brightening compared to the Skin Show shade in Divine Rose 2. That one doesn't really brighten my inner corners all that much. And I'm just going to run that gently here. I think we're going for like soft Barbie here. That would be my final verdict. It's like not obnoxiously pink, it's more like a soft Barbie look. So I may have, you know, exaggerated in the intro of this video how obnoxiously pink this is going to be. It's obnoxiously pink for my standards. I really like how this turned out. I'm going to go back into Divine Rose 2 and take this shade now to very lightly run on my lower lashes. Okay, let's also do the lips together. I'm going to take my MAC Prep and Prime Lip Primer and I'm going to take it a little bit on my fingers because it's almost finished here. I'm going to line my lips with Rain from Lisa Eldridge.
And finally, on my lips, I'm going to take the last gloss in Heavy Petal from Pat to complete our pink look. So this is the final look. Heavy Petal is another one of my summer essentials. I think it is just absolutely perfect for these like warmer months and it goes so freaking well with the Divine Rose 2 palettes. Now I hope that you enjoyed this like a uh, soft Barbie look. I'm going to have to like uh, rush now to work because I'm a little bit late for a meeting in a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to <laughs> rush through this outro but we're going to see each other again very soon for an emergency meeting to discuss the Mothership 11 palette. So uh, hold your horses for that. As usual, let me know what you thought about this look. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!